In this episode, we are going to talk about our trip to Alaska, what we did that was awesome, what we did that was not awesome, and that- It was all awesome. Well, it was all awesome, but we made some mistakes along the yeah. way. And so this video is basically to help you out there who might be interested in riding a motorcycle to Alaska, how to do that, what is the best way, what are some things that we learned that you can avoid, and what you should see when you're up there. Overall, you are going to absolutely love your ride to Alaska. Welcome back to Two Up and Overloaded. One of the most important things to think about when planning a trip to Alaska on a motorcycle is it's all about timing. Yep. You basically only have this little window in the year in which you are able to ride a motorcycle without it being totally covered in snow. Yeah, comfortably. And especially like up to Dead Horse because you're past the Arctic Circle there and there's an arctic chill, if you will, after <laughs> a certain amount of time. And some of the roads um, going in and out of Alaska and within Alaska will be closed in certain times of the year. So you definitely wanna aim for the summer months of June, July, August. If you like pushing the limits of what you can do, you know, there are people that go in May, there are people that are riding through September, but you're yeah, definitely- We were there until September. Yeah, we were there we until were September. Bound. Yes, it was getting quite cold. It's a little more extreme when you're hitting that shoulder season. And each of those months, June, July, and August, have their pros and cons. Some people like to go in June to kind of get there early, but that's when they say the mosquitoes are at their worst. They're always at their worst. Yeah. So I couldn't imagine <laughs> them being any worse than you know when we were there. Okay, so this is gonna be our campsite for the night, um, obviously. I am wearing our new mosquito getup. Um, there are plenty of mosquitoes here, so this has been very useful so far. But this place is way, way better than the last campsite. July has the wildfires at its height. And then August, it's the rainy season, yeah. so. <laughs> When it comes to timing, one of the things that we did wrong was as we were planning out our trip to Alaska, we kept putting all these awesome things to do in the States, in the lower 48. Yeah, and that's um, not necessarily wrong. No. But it wasn't just like, oh, we can mess around in the United States for as long as we want, and then it's like two days cutting through Canada and then we're in Alaska, you know? Exactly. But our pace was a little bit too fast for what we enjoy. Yes. Um, because we were coming up to this crunch of, oh no, it's going to be winter. Like we need to get to Alaska. We want to get to the top of Alaska yeah. all before it turns into a giant icicle. So that was really pushing us to just go, go, go every single day, and it was exhausting. It get, yeah, it can get draining. And so this push, push, push behind us, there's a little fire on our butt. As soon as we'd stop, that fire on our butt would be a fire in our wallets because yes. hotels are very, very expensive when you start getting into that part of remoteness. And during the summertime, the daylight hours are extreme. Yeah. It can get up to 24 hours of daylight. Mm -hmm. 
And I've been dreaming to see the Northern Lights way up over here for yeah. forever and ever, and we miss that as well, which is another timing thing that you could, you know, try to, to aim for. And all that daylight hours really was draining on us. We weren't getting very good sleep. We were camping a lot to save money. And it's hard to camp when there's so much sun. Yeah. So we were really exhausted. Yeah, we bought another tarp to put over our new Big Angus tent. Yeah, and, uh, Agnes. Big Agnes. <laughs> With camping in the, in the middle of the day, even though it's nine o'clock, we bought another blue, big blue tarp to black out our tent. So bring your Eye patches? What are they called? I'm gonna go with, yeah, bring your eye patches. <laughs> bring your well, pirate eye patches. Bring two pirate pipe patches. Yeah. Because that sun is intense. Yes, that's true. <laughs> intense. Ooh. The sun is. <laughs> so obviously, the first thing you have to do to get to Alaska is to go through Canada. I mean, this that's a, a, a big distance. It is a long distance, a lot of miles. There are two main ways to get through Canada to Alaska. There is the very well-known and most popular way called the ALCAN, the Alaska Canadian yeah. Highway. And then there is a- Cassiar. Yes, a lesser used road yeah. that is called the Cassiar. It used to be paved, or it used to be Gravel. Gravel. Yeah. Now it is all paid. Well, and one, like, to get to get a bunch of goodness to Alaska and up to, like, you know, Dead Horse and... What's right here? Uh, white Horse. White Horse. All the horses. To get stuff to horses <laughs> is the Can-Am. Alcan. Alcan. <laughs> I got all the facts. <laughs> Glad you this is supposed dead. to be an informative this video. Is, I'm going to rewatch this. <laughs> and be like, I'm learning stuff. things if you're going to Alaska and coming back down to the US or yeah. to southern Canada you can go up one of the roads and come back on the other road and I'm super happy that that's what we did as well because yeah. uh, Cassier was beautiful and we saw bears eating yes. berries on the side of the road and it was awesome and it was very 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 remote I mean yeah. both are remote but one is like super duper remote and the other yeah. one's like super remote finding hotels you really have to plan it out yeah. a little bit even gas stations can be a bit tricky on the Alcan there's a bunch of stops that people love to take that are really famous there's Leard Hot Springs which right. is awesome <laughs> There's also the signpost forest, yeah. where people bring signs from their home and they put it up into the forest, sign, which is sign, cool. Sign, sign, everywhere, sign. And we like to camp, so don't get us wrong, but you pull over to these campsites and you can't like just hang out and like enjoy the, the river view with like mountains and drinking tea and coffee because the mosquitoes are yeah. just killing you. Hi, good morning. <coughs> wow. Hi, good morning. We are packing up camp because there are a lot of mosquitoes out. We could make tea and coffee, but um, it's kind of like mosquito madness here. I mean, there's just so many. So um, we are gonna pack up as quick as we can and try to find some coffee in town and get out of these woods. <laughs> There's too many of them! Because like, I'm on that planet from like Starship Troopers, it's like, ah! <laughs> That's the other thing, is the mosquitoes are so bad. Yeah, and so when we went, prepared. and not June, which is the worst of the worst, <laughs> and we, I mean, we would pull over at campsites and I would open my visor and I'd just be like, Ooh. As you make your way from Whitehorse, which is the capital of the Yukon in Canada, to Alaska, there's two main ways to go. Well, one is the real main way, and that is the continuation of the Alcan, the Alaska Canadian Highway. Yeah. And that kind of is more southern. And the other way is slightly more northern, and it has a gravel section that is absolutely stunning. It's only open during the summer months, but it is called the Top of the World Highway. And 
it started off at like this little wild, wild west town that was... Dawson City. Dawson City. Yeah. Um, and a little ferry ride across the river. Yeah. But there's this huge line of traffic oh coming goodness. that we're all going southeast. So again, with correct timing, you can hit that road when it's open yeah. and then take the other way on your way back yeah. or switch it up. If you are to take the Elkan into Alaska or vice versa along that southern route, you can hit this lovely part of Alaska that is only accessible through Canada. It's a town called Skagway. That was beautiful. We hit that on our way back south. Yeah. It's also a place where you can catch the ferry that runs along the coastline. Yeah. And before you even get into Alaska, you have one more why choice of, hey, do I want to go up towards Dead Horse on the Dalton, or do I want to hang a, a right and go up towards Tuk Tuk, McTuk Tuk, or whatever it's called. Tuk Tuk Tuk. So that brings up the next point. And if you are going to ride your motorcycle to Alaska, you do have to think about whether you're going to take the Dalton Highway all the way up to Dead Horse or not. We made it to the Dalton Highway. Yay! We started in Fairbanks. We passed through Living Good, which we currently are doing. Uh, then the Arctic Circle is like 150 or so miles from here. And we are staying in Wiseman. And That's then we right. will continue towards Prudhoe Bay, but this is the official start of like some of the first major dirt uh, yeah. in a long time, so we are excited. There is another route that goes past the Arctic Circle up through Canada, and that is a newer road that goes to a town called Tuktoyoktuk. I believe I'm saying it right, I hope so. And we chose not to do yeah, that, we, we just did didn't have enough time take, take, take to do both. Road, no. yeah. <laughs> But we have friends who did, and it's supposed to be really, really yeah, lovely. We took the Dalton up to Dead Horse. That's right, and, and that is the most northern point that you can go to by road in by North America. Road. So one of the problems with going up to Dead Horse is that Dead Horse is not a normal town. It is a completely industrial oil town like they get yeah. oil for gasoline there this and could it's to not all industry be the truest statement ever of it's not about the destination it's about the journey yes because <laughs> dead horse <laughs> yeah dead it's horse lacking. was not all that awesome it was like it was fascinating lunar though. pods it was like yes. if we landed on the moon it's so interesting yeah. to see what life is like for these workers there's people that really don't live there they're just workers working in the oil industry yeah they live in these pods that does look like you're on Mars. No. Yeah. That horse was very expensive. Yes. <laughs> Not a, a tourist destination for any other reason except for it's just the furthest you can absolutely go. Yep. But the ride up there was gorgeous. You go through the Brooks Range. Yeah. That was wow. absolutely amazing. is the tallest mountain range that you can go to via road in Alaska. And like you're following this little pipeline and it was, you know. Big pipeline. It was a big pipeline. <laughs> On that road, we saw musk oxen we sure in did. the wild yeah. and caribou. Bunch of caribou. So that is really, really cool. Yeah. But the Dalton Highway has its drawbacks. It's 
mostly gravel and it can get super muddy. When it's wet, yeah, it's gross. Yeah. Also because Dead Horse is such an industrial center, that road, the Dalton Highway, was built and created for the trucks to go there. So yeah. it is full of big trucks. So yeah, you do have to be careful when you're going on that road. That but we was, thought it was worth it. It was. So we have been traveling around the world on our motorcycle for the past five years. And for the first time ever, we ran out of gas mm -hmm. on the Dalton Highway. That's it, folks. There are like three gas stations. There is one at the beginning at the Yukon River. There is one in the middle in Coldfoot, and then there is one at the end. So just be very aware of your mileage and your gas mileage. And your range, mm -hmm. this is true. We've heard all these people say, oh, I went to Alaska and it's absolutely beautiful. And I'm like, oh, cool, did you go to Dead Horse? And they're like, no. And I'm like, who goes to Alaska and doesn't go to Dead Horse? Lots of people. But our second chapter of Alaska was all in Southern Alaska. Oh my goodness, amazing. And if we started there, I'd be like, there's no reason to go to, yeah. you know. This, it was absolutely beautiful. Homer was... Oh wow. Homer spit. So beautiful. Yeah. Right on the ocean, the mountains come right up and they're all snow-capped. across the Denali Highway. We got stuck on the Denali Highway and had some bike issues. Come on, buddy. Uh -oh. Well, again, because of user error. Yeah, user error. I don't want to two back-to-back -back Tim's an Idiot segments, but here we are. <laughs> Here we are. No, it's not your fault. It just, it happens. It does. But besides that, the Denali Highway is very beautiful. It Fendibulous. is some gravel, but really, yeah. really well, they call good it gravel. Chip seal. Yeah, but if you're looking for some really cool off-road, Hatcher's Pass, yeah. I would definitely recommend. And they have like little side Offshoots. roads that you can go on that like get a little bit more gnarly. More progressively harder, yeah. And there's a mine there. There is a mine. Speaking of mines, if you want to go to the center of the largest national park in the United States, which is St. Elias Wrangell National Park, you can go to a little town called McCarthy. It's a somewhat paved, somewhat gravel road that goes there. It's all very easy riding though, as long as it's not rainy and muddy. And you can camp next to a glacier out there. This is true, you can hear a cabin all yes. night, which is really, really awesome. And there is a mine there as well. This is true, a very old red barn mine. One of the best drives that we took in Alaska was the drive to Valdez.
was just so beautiful. And we wanted to go to Whittier, and we were told that there's this cool tunnel, right? I like tunnels, who doesn't like tunnels? Tunnels are cool. But <laughs> before we got to the tunnel, we were in like a national park of glaciers. And then we're like, all right, well, let's go through this tunnel. The tunnel is very unique because it's a train tunnel. It is. That is so one, one way, ticket way with a train that goes back and forth. But you do have to be careful. There's two train tracks on yeah. either side, and you know, I'm on my motor scooter, and I got this skinny little front tire, and like, I mean, you gotta just make sure you don't hit any of those rails, or mm -hmm. else you'll you'll fall over. So it was a little nerve wracking. And it's very slippery. Yeah, it's like wet and... It's and like in a cave, It's basically. in a cave. Yeah, so there are some really, really cool things to do in southern Alaska. A couple of things that we found was super important was our heated gear. For sure. So make sure your core is nice and warm and your, and your fingers. I've never been like, oh, my thighs are so cold. <laughs> Also, it rained on us pretty yeah. much any day. It can rain in Alaska. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. what month you're there in, it can rain. And so you have to be prepared for not just the cold and the wind, but the rain on top of that. We've heard from people, oh, I spent 21 days in Alaska and it rained for 19 of them. And it's like, oh, that sounds miserable. <laughs> yeah. we, we made a whole uh, gear review on our climb gear that you can check mm -hmm. out. But I was super happy for with my Gore-Tex goodness. Yes. Um, we stayed completely dry. It's a dangerous combo when you can get wet and then cold, you know, and so. Absolutely. We really wanted to make sure that we were dry and warm. Yeah, you definitely want to have some sort of waterproof gear for Alaska. One of the things you have to think about is, are you going to camp or not? And if you do camp, you have to think about bears. Yeah. Bears are going to be everywhere, all throughout your journey from Canada into Alaska and back again. We carry bear spray with us. Yeah, Thankfully, we the, never had to use it. The bear spray captain. Yes. <laughs> the majority of not being attacked and mauled by bears comes from not being an idiot. So, of course, you know, nothing that smells, no deodorant or toothpaste or anything within the tent. Yeah. And we always put it very far away. One of the things we realized right away was that normally in the States when there's bears or even raccoons around, we put our food in a bag way high up in a tree. Yeah. But in Alaska, the trees don't have limbs that stretch out very far. They're like a, a spare gift shooting at yeah. the sky. It's like, where do I hang any of this crap? But uh, when you're remote, like you can park the bike as far away as you can and put food, like hang it up as high as you physically can. Yeah, There's things to avoid. Enough. And if something gets into your food, that really, really sucks, but at least it wasn't like right next to your tent. And also apparently bears like the smell of gasoline. Yeah, so I guess if, it smells sweet. Yeah, it smells sweet, sweet to them. So just, you know, keep that far away from the tent as well. So overall, it was an awesome, epic trip. There's buffalo, there's bears, there's all sorts of really cool wildlife that you're going to see. Mountain goats, caribou. Yeah. Um, oh, it's gonna be epic. We saw the uh, big old, <laughs> oh, amazing. <laughs> oh, the elk, elk. Elk, yes. yes. So I know that your trip is gonna be awesome. I hope that you thought of some things in this video, you learned some things in this video, and I hope that this video was able to help you plan your trip to Alaska. All that. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you liked it. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Bing, bing. And we'll be seeing you next time. Peace, everybody. Bye. Stay safe. We love our northern neighbors, and we don't want there to be any beef. We love Canada. No pun intended, but uh, <laughs> Tim Hortons, not my favorite. From no. one Tim to another, not very, <laughs> not very good, sir. Your coffee, the coffee's good. Burger's not so much. I don't drink coffee, I don't wanna... and I didn't like any of the other things there. So. Yeah, so no oh, well. international wars here. <laughs> we are very, we like Canada. We have very many friends in Canada, but Tim Hortons, I don't, I don't understand. No, not a fan. I got that covered. <laughs> That was bullet point <laughs> 2F. 2F, done. 2F is done.